good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to another edition to, of the Grand Boulevard Coalition, I should say. Uh, I am your host, Bamani Obadelli, uh, board president for the Grand Boulevard uh, Coalition. Um, the Grand Boulevard Coalition is a coalition of community stakeholders and partners in the Grand Boulevard community, uh, focusing on underage drinking and drugging, um, and promoting drug-free communities through our program, um, an initiative um, which is funded by uh, SAMHSA, um, and we also are working in conjunction with, shall I say, in a partnership with the Chicago Area Project. And uh, as always, I'll start off just um, giving acknowledgement uh, to some of our uh, coalition our sector partners, um, which happens to be the Institute for Positive Living, Reverend Maurice Coverson, the Green Light Movement, Ms. Roxanne Jackson, uh, Recovery 2000, uh, Ms. Isetta Walton, um, Greater Harvest Missionary Baptist Church, um, and that's Ms. Lori Rainwright, um, who's our contact there. Uh, Centers for New Horizon, Ms. Krista Hamilton, um, the Bronzeville Community Clubhouse, uh, Mr. John Cook, and our Chicago Public School liaison, uh, Mr. Lafayette Ford. And last but not least, um, our third ward alderman, Alderman Pat Dowell in her office. Um, and so we're thankful and grateful for all those folks, all sector leaders who are partnering with us. So today we have a very um, exciting show. Um, I didn't mention Mr. William Penn, who's on the phones today, who's also our parent advocate. Uh, don't beat him up and give him a hard time. And today, in guests, today, in studio, right before your eyes, is the future of, of our community. Um, he's a young man I've known for quite some time. I've watched him grow and mature um, in community work, and um, it's a pleasure to have him a part of the Grand Boulevard uh, Community Coalition as our youth. Um, advocate, and um, it's Mr. Perry Walton. Perry, how are you, man? Thank you, thank you. I'm excited. All right. I'm very excited. Yeah, are you? Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, Perry, let's get the show started. This is a live show, 312-738-1060, 312-738-1060. We are talking about drug-free communities, um, specifically as it relates to the Grand Boulevard community, uh, and our guest today is our youth advocate, Perry Walton. Perry, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself, man? Um... Okay, I'm 18. That does sure? make me a part of the youth. Yes, yeah, okay. I'm positive. <laughs> All right. 18. Um, I attended CHAS, which is short for Chicago Agricultural High School. for agri Wait, Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences. Okay. And I just graduated this year, 2016. Now I'm attending here at Washington College. Um, pursuing audio engineer and music business. So, yeah, what I'm doing with the, um, with the youth advocate program, Right now is very, you know. All right. I really like it. Okay. All right. So Perry, you've um, I I know some other things that you've been also involved in, uh, working in conjunction with one of our coalition partners, right. um, Recovery Two Thousand. You you've also right. done some HIV AIDS outreach. Tell us a little about yeah. some of the stuff you were doing there. Um, with that, we was pretty much just getting the the news out, the word out. You know, safe sex. You know, distributing condoms. You know, just things to make people aware, because people a lot of people don't know these things. And we're just, you know, here to give that information out. All right. I appreciate that. So um, let's delve right into it. So um, today's youth, and, you know, our motto is most youth don't use, right, right? in Grand Boulevard. Right. Um, but just uh, as a young person, and you, we can talk freely if you like, candidly, um, um, you know, what are some things that parents can look forward to? Um identifiers of of, of, of of young people who might be using do you, well, first of all let me ask this um, question do you know any young people who actually of, of course it's it's almost like it's a trend nowadays so it's just you know it, it's like a social thing you know kids using it socially you know kids that probably wasn't as you know cool or hanging with the cool group of people you know now the fact that they you know probably smoke marijuana that's allowing them to, you know, be socially active with other kids who do smoke marijuana. So um, some identifiers could be the way your kid is responding to anything. You know, um, identifiers as simple as eyes, you know, we can look at their eyes. You can tell that they're using their probably, you know, high off marijuana. Now pills are a big thing. So same thing with the eyes, you know, laziness. Um, drowsy, you know, slurring of the words, you know. Okay. All right. So, and you talked about pills, right? And yeah. so, do you think, Perry, that it is um, 
Uh, can I say, I know peer pressure existed when I was growing up through high school. So today, is it, so when you, your point, is it more peer pressure or is it like the really happening thing? It, to, it's, to it's more like the really happening thing. It's more like, you know, a trend. Kids think it's cool, like it's a thing to do. So it's like if you do that, they want to document it. They want to show people that they're actually a part of smoking or drinking or popping pills or whatever. So, you know, whatever they're doing, whenever they're doing it, they're documenting these things, putting it on social media as Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. You know, so it's more of a, you know, thing to do rather than peer pressure. Yeah, and 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 and, and I think that's probably, I, I guess, one of the scariest thing. but it looks like we got a caller, and I'll come back to the whole, whole right. thought. Um, caller, go ahead. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? and uh, young gentleman next to you. You know, it is hard if you put your mind to it. You, you can tell people that take drugs. You can tell people that smoke pot because you can, you can uh, smell them across the room. Right. When I, was, when I went to the Army in 1968 in Vietnam, we had the best stuff there. But as soon as I landed to put on the United States soil, I quit. It's hard. It's not easy. But the thing is that if the people are about AIDS, it's been 10 years, 15 years of constant, constant stuff putting on walls and streets and stuff about AIDS. So they should know about AIDS already. But they don't. They think, well, I'm going to take a chance. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But no, the young fellow right next to you, I bet you he, I bet you he uses a red coat every time he goes out. So why can't we all, what, I know, I hope he starts spreading it. And if he hasn't already, the news about it. Don't want to, I, I, repeat that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I said, I, I hope they start spreading the news about using condoms. Well, yeah, he is. Yeah, so this way. You know, because I, I, I imagine it's not a very uh, uh, nice disease, but he looks like an intelligent man, and I'll keep watching his show as long as you keep uh, keep having young gentlemen like him. Thank you. Well, well, thank well, you. I appreciate well, it. Thank you. Uh, maybe one day he'll host. I mean, he's been trained here, so you know he'll, we'll switch seats. Uh, I'll be a guest, and he'll be the host. Um, that would be great. I'm looking forward to that day. No, listen, I, I think that the, his future is very bright. And we have several other young people, but um, as I and as I say this, and and I and I'm and I'm not being, you know, uh, saying this because he's sitting here. Um, I think. Thank you for your call, caller. I, uh, Perry Perry has been around uh, for a while. I've watched him in in meetings. He's been in with um, and his grandmother is the executive director of Recovery 2000, Miss Isetta Walton. So she's she's very taught him well. And um, as we have a saying, you know, train up a child. And so. He's well on his way um, as a young person, as a young leader, um, and I'm hoping that he is, in fact, uh, passing those condoms out oh, and spreading the words about, um, uh, about preventing uh, youth underage drinking and drugging in our community. He is the exact right person to uh, be helping us in, in getting this message out to young people in our community. And, um, you know, each one teach one is kind of the motto. Um, you know, that we learned from. But but back to the point, uh, Perry, about peel popping and smoking marijuana and putting it on uh, Facebook. So do you think that it, it behooves parents to also uh, check in on their children's Facebook and Snapchat and all those things? What do you think about that? Um, it it really depends. A lot, of, a lot of kids don't, you know, they make sure their parents don't have access to their profile wherever they, you know, are active. But... Um, I feel as though it's good because, you know, if you do have a parent on your social media, you'll be cautious of the things that you're, like, uploading or posting. You know, you'll be more cautious. You won't, you'll say, oh, I'm not going to, you know, for example, I'm not going to post this video of me smoking or drinking or whatever. You'll be more cautious, so. Okay. And so the, the and, and, and back to the, the other point about, um, it, it not necessarily being peer pressure, but like a fad or, or yeah. something to do today. Right. Um, do you think that most of the young people that you talk to and interact with 
understand the um, the the I guess the severity of smoking marijuana and consuming alcohol at a young age. Apparently they don't. <laughs> Apparently they don't. They they looking at more of the you know fun part about it. They not really worried about you know the long term effects of anything that they doing. They worry about the right now. So for for instance the high or the drunk. You know, you being drunk, they focused on being drunk. They focused on being high. They not focused on, you know, long, long-term long effects like liver problems or lung disease or nothing like that. Okay. And and, and so um, we've had parents, right, um, yeah. who've called into the show. Um, I went back and forth with them when, uh, when our parent advocate, uh, Mr. William Penn, was on with us. And we've had parents talk about, well, um, you know, the kids are going to do it. Or your child is going to do it, so I'd rather them do it with me. Um, what do you think about that theory or that notion, parent? Um, it really depends on the parent. Um, or like how, you, how you're doing it with your kid, how you're trying to, you know, portray it. Rather, oh, you should do this. Or you shouldn't do it. This is why you shouldn't do it. So it depends on the parent. Um, so so you you would think it's okay if a parent decided, okay, I'm well, here's the marijuana. I know you're gonna smoke it, so smoke it in the house with no, me. No, I, I really I really don't <laughs> I condone was, it. I don't okay. condone it, but yeah. I was saying it depends on the parent. Right? Okay. They're promoting it or you know showing the reasons why they shouldn't do it. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. I just you know I, I think when we when we when we look at the the drug and we look at um, the adverse effect that um, marijuana, or let, let's 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 use in today's term, the loud and and yeah. and whatever is on the loud and the mollies and uh, the dirty sprite and uh, the lean. And, and is there something else I'm missing? Because I mean, I uh, try you, to stay you as got it, you yeah, got it yeah, pretty much. Yeah, okay. Right on, I thought maybe there might be something else out there right that I don't point. know about that they, that that young people may be um, experimenting with or engaging in, but. Um, yeah. Yeah, you got, it, you got it pretty much. Yeah, and so when when so if if you pop a molly, um, you smoke some loud, and then drink some lean. I mean, or it, Xanax pills, Xanax pills. Yeah, it, that's something, man. You yeah. know, it, and these it, are things that make that are prescribed for sleep. So this is like, yeah, you know, they they overdose and they just yeah, and 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 walking around in almost like a comatose right. type. State. Zombie type state, like yeah. sleepy, like tired, like don't know what's going on. And so let me ask you this question, Perry. Outside of being a fan, right? Mm -hmm. Personally, do you know young people who maybe self medicate, and that's what I like to call um, it, yeah. because of some issues? Yeah, but that's more like excuses to me. Like I look at that like that's okay. more excuses. You're trying to justify why you're doing it or why it's okay for you to do it. Um, but I do know people, and to me, I just look at it as excuses because that's what it is. Yeah, as an excuse to, to, to get so, high yeah. versus uh, kind of deal Dealing with it. Dealing with it, you know, naturally. Oh, naturally, okay. Yeah, yeah and, and talking to someone, of course. But, um, right. yeah, I, I you know, I hear a lot of different, I get a lot of different feedback as it relates to um, this issue. Um, and again, I, I should mention this is Grand Boulevard Coalition. Um, our number is 312-738-1060. Today our guest is our, our youth advocate, Perry Walton. We're talking about uh, drug-free communities and specifically uh, drug-free community in, in the Grand Boulevard community and the Grand Boulevard Coalition um, and some of the work and things we're doing. And then, uh, next month in February, we have one of our youth talks uh, coming up um, which you've participated in uh, right. a couple of them before, where we come bring young people uh, from the community together um, to sit around and, and talk about, number one, solutions and strategies on how to uh, spread the message of uh, prevention to um, their peers. And so it is, um, man, I, you know, we I, the last one we had, um, I think we had about 15 young people, um, and um, I, I believe 10 out of the 15 actually strike that. I'm talking about usage now. So that seven out of the fifteen um, had had admitted to um, actually smoking marijuana, yeah. um, and just said that they did it because partly because of the fad, and some of them said their peer pressure, peer pressure and um, there are some coping mechanisms or some pains. But with the other side about it is that um, asking, do they think that you know if their parents knew about it and and they would um, 
offer them to smoke in the home, will they? And some of them say they already smoke in the house. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen. So you know, listen. I you know I I have a um, I have five children, um, but I I have now at this point um, four um, a teen, teenagers. And um, uh, my, my, I guess how can I put it, my 17-year-old, because I have a 19-year-old, she's in college, and 17-year-old is, is a junior at Lincoln Park. And um, I was doing the laundry last year, probably in the fall, I would say, and um, right after the show, in fact, our last show aired. And so I'm just like a little personal testimony. And so I'm doing the laundry, and, um, you know, I'm taking the clothes out, so I've, find this bag of marijuana in my in in the washing machine. I mean wow. and it's still like you talk about loud. I mean it's still right. I mean I look it's reeking. Yeah. So I I'm, I'm smelling it and I'm like, "Oh, okay, so and it's been washed, of course." So now there's only two individuals in the home. It's my 13-year-old son and his sister. It's 17. And so I decided, well, you know, and I'm just telling you as a parent, I decide, no, this couldn't be. This has got to be. It was only their clothes in the machine. So I, I, I kind of um, looked, lost over it a day or two. And so on the weekend, this was on a, uh, a Wednesday night. Um, by the weekend, I had um, went to church and came back home on Saturday. Um, I came back home probably about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And normally we would go out, go to dinner, go to a movie or something. And I walk in the house, I go towards the basement, and now I smell marijuana again. So, right. of course, I went ballistic <laughs> uh, right. as, a, as a father. And, and long story short, um, to the point, um, now, I, I don't, my daughter, it was hers. Um, she claimed that she had gotten it from some friends um, in her school, right? And um, that she didn't smoke it, and yeah, she just was holding it because they gave it to her. But she was hanging out in the park behind, in Lincoln Park, behind the school. Um, and so, as I delved in and in, in further investigation, it, she did indulge in, and she did uh, was smoking it, and she had brought it into the house. Number one, she didn't think she was going to get caught. Because uh, she didn't know what time I was going to come. But the, but the point of the matter is some people says, oh, you shouldn't have been so hard on her. All the kids, what you just said, all the young people are doing it. I don't believe that. Um, you know, I think some people are, success, uh, are susceptible to peer pressure, right, as you talked about, or, you know, yeah. or the fad, cool thing to do. Um, and so um, it, it was an experience. Um, of course, she got grounded. Uh, severely, uh, I won't say on TV all the things that happened, but um, she ultimately came back and apologized to me and said, you know, it was a mistake, it was a misjudgment, and I can respect that in an error, uh, uh, something that that she was trying because of her friends, um, you know, that she was hanging out with. Um, she she initially first talked about another race, and I said, I don't, I don't, you're not gonna play that crap with me, you know. Then can no other race or anybody else convince you to do something? You did it because you wanted to. You were curious and you tried it, and you just you know when you make mistakes, you just should own up to it. I mean, and, and that's and I'm talking now as a parent, for any parent that's listening. Um, you know, uh, my first reaction was very hysterical, but then after calming down and then having a dialogue with her. Um, we began to talk about it, and so she later on apologized um, and, and, and said that it wouldn't happen again. But, I mean, I, I, that was just my experience, and, I, and um, it was a very hurting one. It was very shocking because you think as a person um, who's out in the community working, you spend a lot of time outside the home, you don't, you, don't, you don't think that your children would be engaging in these type of things. And so um, it was certainly an eye-opener um, for me. And it also taught me, again, as a parent, to kind of be a little bit more attentive um, in monitoring um, what my children are doing. So I, I'm speaking as a parent, and um, I don't know, did I, did, I, did I do anything wrong? I mean, I mean no, what you heard, I, how to address it as a young person. I mean, um, you tell, as a young person, right? Right. And um, who, who maybe look, some parent out there who has not called in, um, maybe, you know, a shame, don't want to call in, but how do you think it's best for a parent to address the issue of um, their child maybe engaging in um, um, drinking alcohol too young or smoking marijuana or, okay. or popping pills. Um, I feel as though how you went about it 
Um, she came back and, you know, apologized. Just talking about the situation is just, you know, just the right approach to me, just talking about it, not just so much just getting mad to the point like, okay, you're grounded, and it's just that, just talking about it. Ask what made your child do it, what pressured your child to do it, whatever the situation was, just speak on it, talk about it, and, you know, find out what's really going on, and then, you know, you proceed with, you know, whatever punishment you're going to gonna do or whatever but yeah I, I feel as though the biggest thing is just talking about it see where your child head is at or where it was at when they did it when okay all right and 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 and, and as a and as a young person who's very engaged in the community Perry um, what do you think are some some well some ways or solutions that um, even those of us who not, not just because you're a part of GBC but other organizations may be out there who are looking to try to reach young people what do you think is the best way to go about trying to reach young people to try to deal with some of these adverse situations in the community? Um, as far as drugs go, I feel as though we need to implement more, you know, because a lot of kids engage in these type of activities because they don't have nothing else to do. They're not planning on doing anything else. So it's like, it's like, why not? So I feel as though we need to come up with some consistent, because it's been, you know, events, it's been different, you know, Things after school programs, things for kids to do, but I feel as though it needs to be more consistent. It needs to be on a more consistent base. So it's like they're always doing this after school, you know, rather it's after homework, you know, after, just directly after school, just something that's consistently after school to do. Okay. I feel as though that, oh. that'll be a nice solution. All right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a something fair. Something that they like, you know, just not just anything, but things that, you know, they want to do, they can sign up for. Okay. Um, we got a few minutes, so let me give people some information on how they could reach us. Um, the Grand Boulevard Coalition, um, 435 East 35th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60616. Our email is grandboulevardcoalition at gmail.com. Um, and you can get us on Facebook um, at Grand Boulevard Coalition, too. And I, and also, I think we're on Instagram, right, Perry? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah GBC. but okay, GBC Coalition on Instagram. So, um, right. you know, send us a Facebook message. Uh, send us an email. And um, if you want to reach me, my number is 312-420-5582. 312-420-5582. But this is some information where you can reach us again in Grand Boulevard, 435 East 35th Street, um, Chicago, Illinois, 60616. Send us an email at Grand Boulevard Coalition at gmail.com. Or you can get us on Facebook at Grand Boulevard Coalition 2 or on Instagram at GBC. GBC 2? Um, GBC Coalition. Right. All right. And um, it looks like we may even have another caller. We'll try to squeeze in real quick. Caller, uh, good evening. Please be brief with your comment. Hello. Uh, this is. This is who? Uh, this is Ruth. I am calling because um, as a young teenager, uh, it's not talked enough about sex, you know, having sex and uh, unprotected sex. And, um, you know, you, the responsibility of a child and, and, you know, after the child is born, you think about it, oh, well, I have to take care of this child and they want to, say no to it and, and all this. Uh, is a young man talking to his peers about that? Uh, it's not talked about enough uh, as far as I uh, Hey, yeah, Ruth, thank you for your call. We got one minute to go, but I'll let Perry answer your question then tell you some things that we're going to be doing next month for African American AIDS. Then go ahead, Perry. Uh, yeah, of course, we, we're all, like always talking about that. That's the reason why we're giving this information out, really to prevent, you know, STDs and also you know, just babies in general. That's why these kids need to know that. They need to understand it's more than just, you know, either STDs or having babies. You know, we we speak on that all the time. But you could reach us more. You could, you could if you have any more, you know, questions, comments, you could reach us, Recovery2000, at Recovery2000 at Comcast.net. You know, email us questions, you know, comments, concerns, whatever, and we'll get back to you ASAP. Yeah, and so and speaking of that, in our last couple of minutes before we go, um, we're going to have a youth talk next month, and the youth talk next month will be around um, African American World AIDS Day. So it'll be a mixture of talking about underage drinking and drugging, but also um, dealing with uh, safe sex and some other issues. And listen, it's been a great show. Thank you again. We got to wrap up. Tari, we're out of time, but again, until next week, um, 
God bless and peace.